All right, you guys, welcome. Today we have a special guest. We're going to be talking all about TSS and how to train with it. TSS stands for Training Stress Score. So please mute yourself when you come in. We're having a few people drop in, but his name is Gaston Badani. Let me introduce him. And also mention that we have found out that we've been working together for about 10 years. So it's been an awesome journey. He's definitely an athlete that takes the learning to the next level. He really wants to understand every single aspect of the training that we've done together. And he's actually training himself right now. He's just using full circle to have camaraderie and come to classes. Um, but that doesn't mean he won't be back for hopefully triathlon. He's focusing on running right now. Um, but I also had the honor of introducing him to his current wife. So I feel very, very honored that I said that. That is up. right. That is right. Well, so guess Aaron, Aaron, yeah, Aaron uh, definitely, definitely uh, honors the full circle uh, <laughs> name. Um, but uh, thank you, Aaron. And hi, everybody. Uh, and also, I'm Gaston. Yeah, and introduce and say what you do for a living and all that stuff. And then we can get right to it. And so, yeah, so, uh, you know, I was an investment banker for throughout, you know, my most of my adult life. And that allowed me some time to focus on training. And I met Aaron about 10 years ago and we started a journey, which uh, there was a lot of knowledge. And as everybody knows, there's, there's a ton of knowledge. And I think the, um, the whole uh, technical aspect of training has evolved over the last 10 years. I, I think there was no concept of TSS 10 years ago. No, uh, I think it's not. somewhat uh, a more yeah. somewhat uh, recent uh, yeah. thing, right? Yeah, and why don't, you, um, why don't you just quickly share your success? Like you, you're an Ironman, like, you know, talk about, and also when you first started with me, you had two stress fractures in your thighs and oh. you've come a long way, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the, the body breaks at the weakest point, right? And uh, yeah, so I had a, a thing with my bones that got treated over time. Uh, Aaron has been incredibly helpful in, in, in her guidance uh, into how to, um, uh, how to approach training and how to focus on the different parts of the body and the different uh, events, you know, the running, the biking, the swimming. I, I think when I met you, actually, I had started running because that's what I wanted to do. And then I started getting the stress fractures and I said, oh, I got to find something else to do. Actually, the doctor said, you got to go find something else to do. And <laughs> right. I met you at the pool at Jose Marti. I just showed up there one morning at 5.50 in the morning and that's where it all started. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so throughout the years in the beginning, we did the short course and then uh, that led us uh, in 20, was it 2016, I think that uh, we did the, uh, the full Ironman. Before that, yeah. we did a couple of 70.3s. Yeah. Uh, and then I think the following year, I, I tried to do the, the, the second full Ironman, but I had a fall on the bike and I couldn't finish the run. Uh, that was yeah. unfortunate. Um, yeah. but, but throughout the, uh, I think the TSS uh, came together for, uh, for Ironman is, is really when that is a, a big uh, undertaking and you have to be very in tune with your training uh, you can't you can't you, you're working on your limit uh, on the edge uh, I think of your endurance because uh, if you go a little bit over the following day you have to miss training and in order to accomplish a goal that is six months in the future every day counts and uh, yeah. it's important to take the day off but I think it's more important to be smart about your training so that you can train the next day. If right. You're so training... wait, let's start all over. Let's start all over to, from what TSS stands for. And awesome. I'm going to go ahead and make you the host. So you're in control and you can show your slides. Super. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> so, yeah. So try nerd here. I, uh, <laughs> 
I, I prepared some slides. I think I can share the screen here. Let's see if I can. And so I asked Gaston to do this a couple of weeks ago and he like sent me the PowerPoint the same day. And I'm like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if I can, can I share more than one? Uh, let's see, slides. We'll share one first and then <laughs> see yeah, what else you can see. I can share this one, this one. Oh, hold shift to select multiple windows. All right, so I'm gonna share this one and the PDF, wherever that is. Let's see if I can hear it. Let's, let's try it. and share these two. All right. Uh, all right, so let's see if I can, can everybody see that? Yeah. Yep, all right, cool. So training stress score. Uh, this is a scoring system uh, it was developed by a, you know, a very technical guy who did like something uh, very cool that is very useful. Um, basically, it allows you to put a score to your intensity training throughout a, wor a workout session. Uh, basically, 100 points gets you uh, is, is what you get if you're working at your threshold for one hour. So yes. if you go out and you work and you run or you bike, like not all out, but all out as much as you can, uh, do for one hour at the same level intensity, which is pretty much what threshold is, you're going to get a hundred points on that workout. Yeah. Uh, obviously you know, a light workout will get you 20, 30, 40 points or, uh, you know, uh, uh, a hard one hour workout will get you closer to the 100 points. Uh, getting 100 points in one hour workout, I, I don't know, I, I haven't been able to do it. It's very hard, I think. Um, but there's certainly days on your long bikes, you know, those of you that are doing uh, 100 mile bike rides, getting ready for Ironman or something like that, you can certainly get more than 100 points on a workout, for sure. You go on a three, four hour bike ride, and you're pushing it, you're going to get, you know, you can get 150 points, maybe one day, you're going to be yeah. toast after it, obviously. Um, so, uh, Real quick, I just want to mention that. So this number is available in your training piece. If what's the parameter that you have to wear your heart rate monitor, right? Oh, well, that and the most important thing is your zones have to be right. That yes. is the most important thing because garbage right. in, garbage out. This is a formula. And, right. and um, it's yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a formula. So you have to... Uh, tell training peaks what is your uh, lactate threshold heart rate or lactic uh, threat or not lactate but your threshold power yes. um, so if if you don't tell training uh, training peaks those um, um, inputs it's impossible for the formula to have a correct Output. As you can see here, for instance, your TSS heart rate, your uh, training stress score, uh, is a formula that tells you basically how many seconds you worked out at what average times your intensity factor divided by your lactate threshold heart rate by, you know, 3,600, which is uh, as many seconds as you have in one hour. That's why you, that's the, the ratio there. But LTHR, if you don't have this number or training, which Training Peaks knows because you've told it to Training Peaks, then if this number is incorrect, then, you know, the, the TSS number that you're going to get is going to be anything. It's going to be incorrect. It's going to help you to compare one to the other, but it's not going to be. Um, as useful as it could be. So I, I'd say that the most important thing to get this right is get your FTP, your functional threshold power, and your lactate threshold heart rate correct. So your FTP is basically the power on the bike, and the LTHR 
is the heart rate, your lactate threshold heart rate for the run, essentially. Right. On the so swim. Oh yeah, the right? swim. Talk about the swim real quick and then I'll talk about the testing real quick. The, sw the swim is a little different. Uh, I think I had here at CSS somewhere, swim, yeah, here. There, the, top. In the swim, you use CSS, which is critical swim speed, uh, which is, you do a test, you do the 400, 200, which Aaron does for everybody uh, every few weeks. And then, you know, you put, you know, your times and then you put it in a calculator. And, and essentially CSS is the pace at which, the fastest pace at which you could theoretically swim for one hour straight. Yes. Theoretic, like the fastest you go all out for one hour and you try to maintain level, level pace, that would be your CSS. So based off of that, you're gonna get, so in training peaks, uh, and I can, can, you, can everybody see my training peaks? Yes. Yeah, okay. So like if I go here. So why don't you, can you show them where that, so this is when you go into your home page on Training Peaks, you can pull up this performance um, and see your data, right? So maybe back out of even this screen, guest on. So this is where you log in, right? Yeah, so yeah. So for me, it's a different view, right? So, but if you look oh. here, you wanna pull up the screen that has all the different graphs and all the data. And then Which shows is a fantastic, uh, beautiful screen. I, I log in, I try to, I, I, there's a ton of stuff you can put here. Yeah, I, I have, this is my, I've been trying to lose weight. So I created this metrics. I have the index Garmin um, scale. So I've lost a lot Tell of Tell them your there. success. Just tell them you just yeah. lost 20 pounds. Uh, I think I'm closer to 25. So oh, it's sorry. very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I have this one I'm using, you know, you can create here whatever you want. Uh, I, I have my distance by week because I try to, you know, I have targets. This is when I was training for marathon. Um, big pace, that one, that one was there already. Uh, the other one that I use here is the TSS by week. This is a cool, very cool. Um, it just, you know, here is the blue is what you were targeted and the red is what you actually did. So look, I have, this is back. I was, I was running still, I was doing the uh, marathon or I think I can go back and show you which one uh, I was doing when training for Ironman, but um, that's a cool screen. Uh, and then I have this one, which is the performance <laughs> management chart. And if you have it here, it'll show up on your, uh, on your mobile app. Uh, yeah. And that one I'm looking at all the time. Now, this particular one uh, for this call, I changed the dates a little bit because I wanted to show you um, with the help of Aaron, this was the most successful. Uh, woo, 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 woo. This was just an amazing preparation for Ironman Cosmel. I, I think we were... We'd never done anything like this. This was just amazing. Um, the level of preparation and uh, we can see it here on the, in the, in the CTL, ATL, TSB, which I'm guessing you guys have already talked about and no. have some knowledge so, about. Nope, they don't. So the CTL is your yeah. critical training load and that's basically your fitness, right guys? So that's the blue mountains that you see in the background. And you can see how he started and where he ended at the peak for Ironman. Um, and then the other numbers are your training. Like the blue is, I mean, excuse me, the purple is like how hard you're training. And then your, the yellow is your recovery. And well, you notice, is it the opposite? No, no, no. It, it's just, you, can, you can just say it like this, the, the blue, the CTL, is your 42 day average of your TSS. <laughs> right. That, that's it, is your, the average of your last 42 days and the ATL or the fatigue is your is last seven color? days. And what color is that? The purple one is yeah. the last seven days of your TSS. So it all boils down to TSS, but TSS boils down to your lactate threshold heart rate your FTP and your CSS. So that's the basis of everything, those three numbers. Yeah, 
but in, in layman's terms, like looking at the picture, you see the peaks and the valleys of the purple and the, the yellow show you when you're really training hard versus when you're recovering, okay? So it matters, especially to pay attention to this if you're chronically getting tired or um, you're getting injured, it's good to look back here um, to see where we might have overdone it a little bit. And uh, Jessica had a good one. She's not on the call, but I, one year she, we drove, she was really motivated and she wanted to get really, really fast. And we like literally drove her body into the ground and she could never get enough recovery. And she had a terrible year that year. Um, so it's really important if you want to take your understanding of your training to the next level to pay attention to this graph, because it tells you a lot but you have to be wearing your heart rate monitor. You have to have the tests accurate, like Gaston said. All the data has to be input correctly for you to get the information from it. Did I miss anything, Gaston? That's it, that's it. And um, I mean, if, if you get into it, uh, then what you're gonna do, which is what I do, after my workouts, I immediately go in, it's like, all right, how many points did I get? <laughs> <laughs> I got 67. Wow. That's, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, I remember when, you know, in, in, if you're training, uh, for triathlon, uh, long distance in particular, you know, I kept, I remember trying to, my, my, my goal was always, I gotta, I gotta get my hundred points. I gotta get my hundred points. And I tried to get a hundred points per day. Um, it was really hard. Your, your body just gets really tired, but I'm sure the pros get, more than that but you know regular average people like us you know that you you just set yourself a goal and where you feel that you can perform and where you can recover and it'll help you like for instance i have you know 74 67 48 this is an easy run uh 67. there are parameters there are specific tss numbers to hold for sprint for Olympic, for half Ironman and for Ironman, um, there are like goals, right? And the same thing for 5Ks, 10Ks, 70, I mean, 13.1 and 26.2. So I, I will find those numbers um, and I'll put them out to the group so that if you guys wanna start doing that, you know, th this is the number you need to be hitting to reach your maximum capability for your eight race. Cool. But there so, are numbers. So, um... You know, I, I wanted to, uh, you know, tell you a little bit, a little bit about how to use it, uh, how to get an accurate number, uh, and explain a little bit of what it is. Um, so, in in how to use it, this is how to use it. Basically, you go in and every day, and you know how many points you got. Um, this particular one is RTSS because it's for running. It's based on heart rate. Um, uh, and your pace and everything. And then this is where my CTL is, my fitness, my current fitness is at 42. So that's a number that I look at every single day uh, on, you have this little um, graph, you have it on your app, on your Training Peaks app, when you open it on your mobile. Uh, and I look at it sometimes like at last seven days, I lost one. I mean, that's a really bad day for me because you know, I'm always trying to improve my fitness and uh, the, the CTL, as that number goes up, everything starts falling into place. You recover faster, you are running faster, you are biking faster, you're swimming faster. Uh, everything is, you're, you're becoming better as this number increases. So this is a reflection of where you are in your training. Um, so I'll go back to the PDF here real quick and yeah. uh, just, uh, just, it's just nine slides. So it's just very quick. So um, it's a point-based system. It's a hundred points. Uh, like I said, a hundred points is if you go all out and all out meaning at your threshold for one hour. Um, what else here we got? Let's see, let's go to the next one. This is the formula if you care to look at it. Um, then we talked about the CTL, which is the blue one. That's your 42 day average of your daily TSS. So if you got 
42 days at 50 TSS every day, your average is going to be 50. And then this one's going to be 50 as well. But that's rarely the case. You take a day's break every now and then, or you get injured and you took three days off. So all of that um, affects and your intensity factor, how intense you train is also a part of the formula, but we'll not go that deep into it. Um, and then the, the yellow one, the TSB that we talked about is essentially like when you're tapering before a race, that's when you are allowing your body to recover. And that, that yellow one goes back into the positive. I'll show you here. My negative 14 right now is not too bad. Um, but if I go to the dashboard and I go to this one here, so you'll see that these, when the yellow one goes up, and that's on the right over here, this is zero right around here. Um, this is when we're tapering before a race, usually. Or, you know, we finished, uh, you know, an eight week cycle or something like that. Um, Aaron, we used to do, and I don't know if you're still doing that, your annual training plans. Yes, uh, we still are. Yep. 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 Here's the ATP. So you can put all that. Uh, and, and that'll basically coincide here. You can see it, how the lines are here in the training plan this year. Uh, so you can visualize all of that. Um, but I'll go back to the- uh, So ideally you're, you're peaking, right? So you might not right. peak for your C race or your B race. So you might go into one of those races a little more fatigued. So that line won't be as big. But before your A race, you know, some people only need a week or some people need 10 days or some people need two weeks. But we're testing that, you know, through the season. Um, and obviously, the longer the race, the longer the taper. Um, but you can see how he gets, you know, he, he gets these really high, you know, recovery peaks. And then he goes back into a hard training, you know, series. And that's what eventually makes that blue line higher and higher and higher because that's his overall fitness, taking all these factors into consideration. Exactly. Right. So why is TSS important? Well, it, if you have the numbers right, um, you know, the FTP and the LTHR and the CSS, and you're wearing your heart rate monitor for your runs and your bikes, and uh, you have a power meter on the bike, and, and if you input all the right data, and you have this chart, for instance, and this information you can use it to know gauge more than uh, there's there's the feel gauge right like you feel rested yeah but then the numbers are a huge help that can give you a good visualization of where you are in your training um you know that you have a race coming up and you know maybe you haven't been doing so much training so you're kind of rested so your you know your your yellow line could be near zero already so that tells you that you're good it's you know you're, you're you you don't need to take such a big step off of training um right. so you can it, it'll help you guide what kind of intensity what kind of workouts you're doing going forward as well yeah and why don't you just talk about after 10 years how you've tuned into how your body feels as well so having the combination of your own intuitive and paying attention to your to how you feel instead of ignoring it <laughs> right no that that is uh, I, I we were having this conversation right before the call um yeah. that looking at this information all the time uh at the same time that you're training you start learning and associating how you feel with the numbers that uh you're seeing here represented in these charts um and it teaches you uh to recognize how what you're feeling affects the way that you're going to feel later, depending on the type of workouts that you do. Uh, so at this point, yes, after 10 years, I was just telling Aaron that I've become very aware of, of my body. And, you know, I think it was a few weeks ago uh, we were doing a track workout and I went through the warm up and I felt my body said, mm, you know, the, I think I need to break. And 
and came uh, when when we finished the warm up. I said to Erin, "Look, I'm just gonna stop here. I'm gonna go home." And she said, "Is something hurting?" And I said, "No, my body just needs needs a break." And I took two days off, and and I came right back at it, and it was great. I, I felt great, but that knowledge comes from paying attention to C TSS, paying attention to CTL, ATL, TSB, all this, uh, all this information. Awesome. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Don't be shy. You can unmute yourself and ask. I have a question. Jack? I have many questions. <laughs> For the intensity factor, do you know, I guess we don't have to go like very in depth, but is intensity factor calculated from what, based on your heart rate and what percentage of those threshold paces or values you're going? That is a great question, Jack. Hi. Um, yeah, I think I, I think you'll probably know this better than me. I am not. 100% knowledgeable in the intensity factor formula, how you achieve that. But I'm guessing is how long you work closer to LTHR. Um, yes. And I think that's, that's definitely, uh, definitely a part of it. But intensity factor is definitely a part of the formula. Um, and that's, 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 it's, that's why it's there. So yeah, so that there's more there's more videos there. There's actually Training Peaks University. So if you guys want even more to go deeper into this rabbit hole, um, they actually have YouTube videos about each, um, you know, CTL, ATL. Um, I went to Training Peaks University a couple of years ago, and it was so fascinating. You can actually design an entire program based only on TSS. And I found that when I tried to do that with people. You know, oh, I didn't wear my heart rate monitor. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, it was, uh, it, you just have to be a certain type of level, an athlete, that you're going to do the numbers for it to work at all, because otherwise you can get really lost in the numbers themselves and hit, killing yourself to get this certain number because you're doing an Ironman. You're going to show up and have the best performance. But if you're not putting on all the data on the road, then it's not going to be successful. It's not going to work. So I found that there wasn't a, as many athletes that were willing to go so detailed into the numbers, but I thought that it was time because some of you guys are at this place right now and you are really into the numbers and you wanted to learn more. So I feel like this could help a few of you um, take it to the next level by paying attention to your TSS and really working the numbers as Gaston just mentioned. So, um, but Jack, we should definitely watch that video about the intensity factors so we can learn a lot more, okay? Yeah. So, uh, Aaron, if you don't mind, I'll just uh, I'll just finish here with a couple of things. So, I put yeah. a link here, uh, which uh, tells you you know your different tests that which are the same ones that everybody knows: the 400 meter and 200 meter for the swim. Then there's the 20 minute power test uh, for the bike that you go all out and you take 95 percent of that. I actually use normalized power. Some people use average power. And then for the run, you go out on a 30 minute all out and you take the last 20 minutes average of your heart rate. That'll for give heart. you yeah. that, right, exactly. That'll give you your lactate threshold heart rate on your run. And then you go in training peaks in settings and you input your thresholds here. And from your thresholds, you can use different methods of calculating your zones. I use this one right here, which is essentially the Joe Friel, but instead of having 5A, 5B, 5C, I just have one zone five. It's essentially the same. And then- yes, so um, We do all of these just to let you know, but we do a little bit different for the power test, just because I like the two by eight minute power test because most everyone can do that. But at my more advanced athletes, I do do the 20 minute power test. But if you it's do the hard two test, by, yeah, the, <laughs> it's a very hard test. So the two by eight is way more in your mind. You're like, okay, I, I got this. And then I only take 90% because it's shorter and I average the two numbers. And then I take 90% of that average. And then for the run, I also do a, I do a pace test, which is your one mile test. 
And then the heart rate, I've actually haven't been doing as much because a heart rate 30 minute all out time trial is also very difficult, but it will give us more information. So if you guys want to do that test, uh, we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I, I, it's a great test. I mean, you can do it on a 10K, for instance, or something like that, but it has to be fresh. It's not like, yeah. oh, yeah, I did this Olympic. And then, no, that's different because, you know, yeah. you're on an Olympic, you already swam and you already bike. So it's right. different. Yeah, it's, but it's anyway, meant, it's meant to really get your max heart rate, like the highest you've ever seen. You can, you're always going to have a higher heart rate on the run than you are on the bike. But I like to just ask people, as a game, you know, a ballpark figure, what's the highest you've ever seen your heart rate? Because believe it or not, usually it's in the, it should be in the one eighties. Most of the time, if you're not able to get up that high, there's usually a fitness factor involved and that's where training comes in. Right. And, uh, I think, uh, if you're wearing your heart rate monitor, uh, I think, uh, you can go into training peaks and find out what's your historical max heart rate also. Yes. You can also do that. Exactly. Cool. And so that's it. Conclusion. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> well, I think we talked about everything <laughs> on your conclusion. But um, yeah, any other questions, you guys? I know it's a lot. Um, and if you're if you're like at the place where you're like, yeah, I don't, uh, then it's not for you, right? But if it's something that you do want to start incorporating, you know, making sure we have the, all the tests accurate, and then making sure we get that heart rate test, which is a harder test. And then starting to pay attention to those numbers. So, you know, please reach out to me and Jack. And if it's something that you guys want to start doing, we can definitely start implementing. Can I ask something else? Of course. Um, how, at the beginning, you said that sometimes you would use, you would look at the numbers and kind of decide that you weren't going to train as hard as you had planned to that day. How do you know? based on those numbers, if you should be sticking to what was in your training plan or changing it? Great like, question, great if you question. Feel, if you feel like you have the energy to do it, what is like a- Yeah, yeah, I mean, what, it, in the numbers. If, you're, if you're putting a lot of hours into like an Ironman campaign, um, you can, you, you, you wake up and you say, oh, I feel okay. I think I can go for an 80 mile bike ride today. Uh, but then you look at this red line here and it's like, you're, you, you've done tons of hundred TSS workouts throughout that week. And like, that is just not smart because yeah. if you go out for that 80 mile bike in, you know, 85, 90 degree weather, but then tomorrow you gotta you gotta hit your thirty five hundred yard or four thousand yard uh, swim workout. You're gonna be toast. Yeah, you're gonna be, you're gonna be dead. Uh, and that yeah, I mean that comes from experience a little bit. But you could feel you could say, oh, I feel good. I feel good. The truth that I've found is that when these numbers they they're here they they're here for a reason. Um, your body. The, it, it accumulates and I can go for the 80 mile bike ride today, but I know that tomorrow or the day after my body's going to feel it and I'm going to miss a workout because of it. Um, so it helps you keep track of where you are, not just how you feel today. It's, it's a visual representation of what you've been doing so far. And so that's how yeah. I use it. Yeah, and I also just want to point out to the right, um, over to the right, where he really peeks out. Just notice that the blue, the purple line, or his, what he calls red, and I call purple, but um, these lines are closer together. Yes, there's very big peaks and valleys, but you see these really giant ones over to the left. This is when he like most likely got hurt or something happened, and he took more time off. And notice the blue line stays flat, but on, at the end, you know, this is dialed in, like it worked. We fatigued you, but you were also getting recovery. And then look how much your, your CTL climbed to peak out, right, for your A, day, A race. So 100%. the idea is to not have as much big extremes. I mean, honestly, when you have a big purple extreme, then you do need to have a big recovery, right? But if you can right. have like less of a, of, a, of a spike up and down, you're going to be able to have more maintain maintenance of a longer term goal. Does that make sense? Jack, does that make sense? Yes. 
Yeah, and good, really good question because I know you've been feeling tired. You should, why don't you pull up your CTL right now and like, let's take a look because it'd be interesting to see maybe do the last 90 days um, and just take a snapshot of that and post it in the group chat so we can kind of take a look. And yeah. I don't see. think it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> don't, be, don't be embarrassed to share your numbers <laughs> but yeah it's kind of a, kind of cool data you know yeah i'm really intrigued i love this um yeah i knew you would <laughs> but so also I'm sure, just... I'm sure it only <laughs> everything that you tell to training peaks so <laughs> Like if you go for a walk or for a hike or something and you're not tracking it on your watch, Training Peaks doesn't know the activity that you're doing yes. as well yeah. as if you're not using your watch to the full capability. Like for swimming, if you just let the watch run when you're recovering instead of like hitting lap, then it doesn't know where you are based on your threshold paces. So right. it would take more. I'm just saying those things because I know that I do those things. So it would take a lot of attention to yes. make sure Training Peaks knows exactly what exactly. you're doing. Exactly, exactly right. On the bike, make yeah. sure that you have it so that you're not recording zeros or that you're pausing uh, the workout when you're just standing. Uh, yes. Just garbage in, garbage out. So just make sure that you, you grab the correct data. So this is Gaston's uh, COVID right here. <laughs> right? That's right. This is, yeah, this let's, is COVID. this is my COVID here. And then this is when I started uh, back training here. You could see um, this has been, I think, uh, let me see if I do a little less. Let's, let's just say 180 days, just like the last yeah. six months. Um, a little close. So this is, you can see, I get here and then I take a break and then I go up and then I take a break and then I go. And this is how you were supposed to work in the micro and the macro cycles, right? Just take a break every now and then. So yeah, so Gaston, I will tell you guys, he, this is a very aggressive training plan to his goal. I would like, especially someone who's newer, the ramp up would be a little bit more gentle. But he, he knows his body. He's been doing this like for 10 years, right? So we, we know, he knows when he's about to get injured. He knows when he's pushing himself too hard. Um, and he's also only doing one sport right now, just running. Right, which so is very, huge. very different. Very, very different. So yeah. most people will not have this high of a ramp up in this short right. amount of time because cool. they're not as focused as Gaston, Gaston is on this goal of getting sub 20 by thanksgiving turkey trot right yeah it's a goal yeah, we'll see what yeah, already, so just <laughs> to let you guys know he already beat his personal record at the 5k now and that yeah. just shows you i wanted to reinforce this about when people do a big race and then they take time off if you just do a little bit like five days a week of you know the swim the bike the run or, or at least one of them your ability to come back faster than you've ever been in before is so much higher than if you completely fall off the wagon and do absolutely nothing for three to six months. And I'm hoping some of the athletes that I haven't seen in a while because they did their A race and they're, they're wanting to take a break, don't go black and white. Don't have grays in there that you're still staying active. You're still swimming a little bit. You're still biking a little bit. You're still running a little bit. So that when you come back, you could have a PR after just six weeks because you have so much muscle memory in your body. Your body's been used to the training over a longer period of time. This three week all out, kill it, and then over, you're going to have a lot harder, longer road coming back then if you just stay a little bit consistent during that recovery time or when you're taking a break, does that make sense? Right, and that's that's what, what I've been doing uh, with, also with your help, Aaron, uh, and, and kind of shows here. Um, I think in the beginning when we started doing the Ironman, we would do two weeks hard, one week easy, two weeks hard. Eventually, as you, you break your body in, you're, yeah. you're able to withstand a longer, um cycle. cycle so we did i think uh, 
I've right. at least myself, I've uh, I've come to three weeks is a good 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 amount of time. So so all these here, you can see that you know we're doing three weeks and then one recovery week, three weeks recovery week. Three. Right now, I'm at the end, coming to the end of my three week recovery, and every time the 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 form it goes up a little bit up a little higher, and yeah. that means that you're more recovered, you have better fitness. So, um, Your body but right now I know next week, for instance, I know that even if I feel okay, I have to take that break. Yes. Because if not the following week, something's gonna break. My knee, my, uh, <laughs> my toe, something's gonna break and I'm gonna have to take three weeks off. So I just have right. to be on the lookout. Not worth it, not worth it. Okay, there's a couple comments in the chat. Let's see. Wait, we do want our computer to include power or not. Zero, no, no, zero power. So zero, you wanna take it zeros out of your power meter. So on your Garmin, when it's collecting the numbers, there, you wanna look at normalized power and that, cause that takes out the zeros for you. And when you're collecting data, you can do three second or 10 second power and I, recommend 10 seconds just because it's a little smoother information flow coming to oh, you. What do you think? There's 10 seconds now. Wow. I, yeah. I, I always had a three second power. Yeah, they have 10 seconds. Um, Jessica me, says. Okay, Jessica's here. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> she know, says, for me, is... I've noticed my threshold seemed to be 90 for CTL and 100 for ATL. After that, I crash and burn. Okay, so you know your numbers, I guess. Is that what you're saying? That, yeah, that's a, that's a hard number. That's that's some go for She's it. Just, week. <laughs> Jessica, that's awesome. can you chime in? I wanna. Can you talk? Can you unmute yourself, Jess? I can unmute myself. <laughs> okay, cool. So I wanted to mention. Do you remember that year we looked at your eight, your your this the the CTL because there were so many races that we just did not have any good performances at. And remember, like we really figured it out that we just really pushed way too hard, way too fast every single time. And you weren't really getting into the race um, as recovered as we had hoped. Do you remember when we went back and looked at all the data? Do you have that year by any chance? I mean, that's that's kind of my general <laughs> theme. <laughs> I, I don't know, think I've like, ever I done a really good taper because right. I just... I go wait the one the one thing that really stands out I think is the last time I went to camp I yeah. by the end of camp I was a miserable person and I think my oh. and then I just crashed at like for at, so camp was um when was that JJ when was that was that 2019 or 2018 I think it was 18 mm -hmm. you guys it might have been 18 yeah. yeah so camp was um March, like the middle of March. And then I had Florida 70.3 in April. Right. And I basically cool. took like two weeks because I just, I was done. I was cooked. Yeah. And yeah, if you I look at my chart, yeah, it looks, can, it looks Can like you pull that. it up? Do you have it on your, your computer right now? Can you just show it? Because I just remembered us having, because there was three times that we peaked that year, which is a lot of peaking in one year. Um, but I can ha make you host if you're willing to share your screen. Are you? Well, I'm on my phone. Oh, so... well, maybe take a picture of that one year and just post it in the group chat just so people can see that it's okay. not really a good idea to have like, you know, three A races in one year and it can really fry you and you might not get any of the good results on any of them if you do that kind of thing. Well, but I will say I've learned like now, like, I mean, you see people online posting like these, uh, you know, like drastic numbers and it really doesn't matter, you know, because right. you have to really learn what your, because consist, like you've been saying, consistency is above all else, you right. know, if, so if you're able to maintain a certain threshold longer, then you're going to be fitter at the end. And it like, I don't know, like Gaston's might be one thing, but I settle at a different number and Richard is at a different right. number. So right. Right. he's got a different number. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. I'll try and find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Are right, you guys any other questions? Or are we good? 
All right, awesome. So I'm I'm gonna be doing more like extra calls in the near future. We're gonna have a nutrition one coming up soon, um, and maybe some injury prevention because a few of you have come up with a few injuries lately that we want to try to figure out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And Gaston, thank you so much for all of your knowledge and your application and how it's worked for you. Um, so I guess thank that's it. Thank you for it. inviting me. Thank you for You're inviting welcome. me. I'm so happy to have you back. <laughs> soon right, in guys. triathlon yay that's what i like to hear so 2022 is gonna be triathlon year <laughs> okay awesome all right guys have an amazing day and i'm gonna i recorded this or actually it doesn't look like it's still recording but i hope it, it is, is still recording yep okay you're the host that's why i can't see it so go ahead oh. and um, we'll send the recording out and we'll post it on the youtube channel so you guys can watch it back anytime you want okay all right you guys wishing you well have a great day so guess on you thank you Thank you. Goodbye.